Situated on a mountain top overlooking Lake Winnipesaukee is Lucknow Mansion, also known as Castle in the Clouds. Built in 1914, Lucknow Mansion was inspired, according to its original owner, Thomas Plant, by Norwegian, Swiss, Norman, and Japanese architecture. Although its construction employed modern materials like steel beams and terracotta blocks, the exterior was veneered with hand-cut stone and adorned with hand-scalloped oak timber framing. Lucknow Mansion, therefore, exemplifies the arts and crafts movement in its handcrafted aesthetic and reverence for architectural traditions. Born in Bath, Maine in 1859 to a French-Canadian family and modest means, Thomas Plant left school at the age of 14 to find work. Possessing an entrepreneurial spirit, Plant rose from factory laborer to proprietor of the Thomas G. Plant Shoe Company by the age of 32. By the time of his retirement in 1910, his shoe company was the largest in the world. Your visit to Lucknow Mansion will likely begin with a visit to the carriage house. It is from here that visitors take a short trolley ride up to the mansion. The carriage house provides an atmospheric introduction to the property. It also features temporary exhibits related to Lucknow Mansion and dining with a view of the lakes region from its rear deck. While Lucknow was designed as a place of leisure and respite, it took strenuous effort to make life comfortable for Thomas Plant, his wife, and all of their friends. A carriage house exhibition reveals what has been learned about the people who built and cared for the mansion. In 1913 and 1914, Thomas Plant employed roughly 1,000 people to construct the features of his Lucknow estate. Among the many features to be built were horse stables, a golf course, an earthen dam, and 45 miles of roadway. The construction crew included local men and workers commissioned in Boston, including many recent immigrants. Plant also employed the shipwrights of his hometown of Bath, Maine, to shape the white oak for the mansion's exterior. All of this was completed in a year and a half. The chauffeur was also responsible for maintaining the plant's cars and boats. Also, as someone with mechanical knowledge, the chauffeur was tasked with maintenance of the hydro generator, which supplied electricity for the estate until 1921. There are reports of up to 30 members in the early years at Lucknow. This number would have included house servants, gardeners, stable hands, farm laborers, and more. There were not enough rooms in the Lucknow Mansion for the plant's large staff. However, there was additional housing for male employees in the horse stable, today's carriage house. This involved dormitory-style housing with an indoor bath. There was also separate housing for male employees with families. A team of horsemen or stable hands cared for the plant's beloved horses. They fed, watered, exercised, and groomed the animals. A senior horseman or caretaker supervised these men. Bridget Agnes Moulton, seen here with her son Arthur, was a housekeeper at Lucknow during the early 1920s. She and her husband Chester, who was also employed by the plants, lived with their family at Brook Lodge, the gatehouse at the estate entrance. By 1930, the Lucknow staff had dwindled to three, a single living servant, a groundskeeper, and a farm manager. A 
Among the many highlights of touring Lucknow is the inspiring view of the lakes region from the rear of the mansion. Looking out toward Lake Winnipesaukee, one understands why the property is marketed as Castle in the Clouds. Lucknow Mansion was intended to fit naturally and comfortably into the landscape. For a modern, comfortable life, the plant selected furnishings handcrafted by the best artisans and installed state-of-the-art appliances and technologies throughout the house. One of the highlights of the main hall is the Aeolian organ. The organ was manufactured in New York and it was the mansion's architect, J. Williams Beale, who provided space for the organ in the original plans for the house. The visible pipes, however, are ornamental and conceal the chamber that housed the original pipes. The library features a collection of pieces depicting Napoleon, which may have been purchased by the plants during their travels to Europe. Much of the artwork in the library was either owned by the plants or are reproductions of original pieces. The plants decorated their bookshelves with Asian and Art Deco sculptures. The pieces displayed in the library are recent donations to the Castle Preservation Society. There are 21 hand-painted enamel roundels located throughout the mansion. These decorative glass rounds are built into the doors and windows and depict local flora, fauna, and views of nearby lakes and waterfalls. The artists of these works are unknown, but may have been on the staff of the George Rag Company of England, which manufactured the windows and glass doors. Located next to the mansion's front entrance is Thomas Plant's office, where he would conduct estate affairs and other administrative business. Olive Dewey married Thomas Plant in 1913, and the two moved into the new mountaintop home a year later. The Plants enjoyed their estate for many years until overspending and poor investments left them in financial difficulty. In 1941, after Thomas Plant's death, the estate was foreclosed on and Olive returned home to Illinois. Despite its remote location, Lucknow Mansion was outfitted with unique technologies that made life comfortable for the plants. Rather than an icebox, this home always had a refrigerator. It ran on electricity and used brine and ammonia as a coolant. It took considerable skill to manage the coal fire and maintain a steady temperature for cooking on this range. Manufactured by Boston's Cyrus Carpenter and Company, this coal-burning range features seven cooking plates, two ovens, and two warming ovens. It was vented directly into the chimney 
and could be emptied of its ashes via a waste chute to a bin in the basement. Moving from the kitchen to the servants' hall, take time to examine the floor, constructed with interlocking rubber tiles that were made by the New York Belting and Packing Company. The tiles were advertised as noiseless, non-slippery, waterproof, and thoroughly sanitary. The company also suggested that these tiles were more durable than stone or earthenware. This was a dining and break room for the house servants. During the prosperous early days, up to six staff members may have lived in the main house. The number of staff, however, was reduced in hard times. By 1930, only one woman, a Swedish housekeeper named Martina Melmquist, was living with the plants. Although small, this was the plant's formal dining room. This was a space for intimate gatherings with close friends and family. The understated decor allowed the scenic beauty of Lucknow's natural setting to shine. In recent years, a team of preservation specialists fully restored this room to its original appearance using historic photographs as a guide. This room was shared by Thomas and Olive Plant while they were at Lucknow. Although smaller than rooms on the second floor, this room was meant only to be a place for sleeping. The plants each had other spaces in the house for dressing and relaxing. Lucknow's bedrooms were furnished with twin beds. Twin beds were in vogue at the time. It was believed separate sleeping spaces afforded better, more restful, and restorative sleep. The owner's bathroom is fitted with two toilets in individual private rooms, two sinks, and a deep tub. Both the enclosed tub base and tile floor and walls epitomize the modern 20th century ideal sanitary bathroom. Lucknow Mansion was also outfitted with needle showers. Each wraparound pipe is punctured with small holes which create fine jets of water that spray the user like needles, 
providing an invigorating and therapeutic massage. However, the notion that women were fragile contributed to one theory that showering might be harmful for females. Typically, only the wealthy had showers in their homes up until the 1920s. A system like this one would have cost $300 to $500.